it's okay to have pi the answer, right? Okay, you don't have to put in 3.14 approximated. Okay, and there it is, not the answer. Pretty easy, right? Okay, all right, let's go on to example B where we have the cassette tapes. Ah, the old cassette tapes. Oh, the memories. Of being in first grade in the 80s, I mean, all right? I'm very young. Okay, now uh, cassette tapes. All right, the cassette tape has two spools, all right, and each one of these is a half inch across in diameter. Okay, so we have to know the diameter or the radius, either one. All right, now uh, a cassette tape makes 112.5 revolutions per minute. Okay, oh, Mr. Ray, that's an awful number. Well, I had to make it real life. That's what it is in real life. Okay. So we're stuck with a nice decimal. That's okay. It's good to simplify. All right, so we got that. Now notice, last time it was only one revolution per. Lots of times when they talk about things that are moving in real life, they talk about how many revolutions it makes in one minute instead of one revolution per whatever. Okay? So you can see it both ways. All right? But it's the same setup, though, exactly the same setup. So first things first. What did we find first last time? Find your circumference because that's distance traveled. Okay, so circumference, we're going around the outside here. So if you do the circumference, that would be what? One half pi. Yeah, should be d pi, and that's your diameter. So it's one half pi, and then what are the units? What's the little double slash there? And then the inches, all right. Okay, there's my circumference. All right, now let's look at the revolution part of this problem. I'm going to make 112.5 revolutions per minute. Yeah. That means one divided by one minute because it's per one minute, right? Okay, and so it's going to go around that many times in one minute. We're going to translate that into a velocity. Okay, so let's see if we can do that. Well, cover up the uh, 112.5 right now. Notice the word revolution. Revolution could be replaced by what? Circumference, Circumference which is this right here. Which is pi over two inches essentially. Okay. So let's change that in revolutions. Oh, but wait, it's 112.5 revolutions. So it's 112.5 times that. Okay? So it's going to be well, convert that down. All right? Now there's one other trick that I slipped into this question right here. And that is the following uh, find the answer in inches per second. And right now we have inches per minute. All right? With conversion time. If you've done uh, chemistry class or are doing one right now, you perhaps you've done a lot of these conversions. All right, should be pretty easy. Okay, uh, even in physics you do some of the conversions. Oh, no. Your favorite class? Yeah. Your favorite class? Yeah. Okay. Be careful. Okay. Uh, so let's see. One minute. Now, what do I want to cancel out? What units do I need to drop out? Minutes should drop out. Where should I put it to cancel out? Ah, cross canceling, right? Put it up top, it will cross cancel, but then we're going to try to change it and do what do I want? I want per second in the problem, wouldn't that cross that out and make it inches per second? Yeah. There it is. But now let's say how many? The seconds go into minutes or minutes go into seconds? Same for one minute. Hey, listen, we've got how many? 60, 60 seconds equals one minute. And isn't one minute over 60 seconds like doing something divided by itself? It's the same. Guess what anything divided by itself is? One. And in math, if you multiply by one, it's okay because it doesn't change the value of the problem. So that's perfectly legal right there. Okay? And if you do that, let's see if we can simplify this. Okay, so now we've got inches per second. Here's what I would do. You can't leave a fraction inside of a fraction. Remember that? Okay? Kind of like with the sine cosine change and stuff. If you don't want a fraction in a fraction, there's one other place we can put this pi over two. It's in the numerator right now. Where else can you put it if it's in the numerator? No, no, no. Uh, if you put it in the denominator, you have to flip it over, and it would still be a fraction. But top in math, top means five. Oh, mine. Anybody? Top means sine. It's the same thing. Okay, kind of like this. Okay, what if you had this? It's the same thing as putting it on the side. Okay, and you're not supposed to put negatives on the bottom. Right? Same thing. Anytime you have something in math, or how about this one? Even better. How about x over 2? Isn't that the same thing as 1 half x? 
but it's not the same thing as one over two x. Okay, so top mean side. So what I would do is this: I would do the 112.5, and I would put the pi over two not on the top but on the side, kind of like this. Oh, so the pi is going to stay on top, but the two is going to go to the bottom, right? And then over here, we've got one over 60 seconds. Okay, so just slide that pi over two right at the edge, put it on the side right over there. That will help us. And let's look for some kind of cross cancellation. 2 goes into 112.5. No, not really. 60 goes into 112.5. Eh, not really. Okay, let's just multiply the 2 times 60. Yeah. So 112.5 pi inches over what? 120 seconds. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. All right. You also can't leave what else in a fraction? You can't leave a decimal in a fraction, can you? Okay, not allowed. You have to have a regular number up top, regular number on the bottom. Nice integers here. So, let's do this. Let's play a new game. It's called scoop. I'm going to put my finger on that decimal and my finger on this imaginary decimal right here. And I'm going to scoop them together. How much? One. one to there. And if you scoot, it would be 1125 pi inches over what? 1200 seconds. Okay? This problem has all kinds of good stuff in it. Scooting decimals, sliding fractions, converting, tons of good stuff. This is probably like the longest one, too, in the whole entire chapter, right? Okay? But each step is not that hard. It's just a few steps. Now, the last thing I would do is try to reduce anything you can reduce. Is there anything I can put into these two numbers right here? Five. Okay? Five, definitely. I think there's even a better one. Twenty-five. I think 25 will go into both of those. Here's what I'm thinking. Right? A little side note here. It's going to be patterns. 25. That's kind of like $12, and you're trying to put quarters in dollars. How many quarters are in one dollar? Four quarters in a dollar. So how many quarters are in twelve dollars? Four times twelve is forty-eight. And if you had eleven dollars and twenty-five cents, that's how many quarters less than this one right here? Three. Three quarters less, which would be how many quarters? Forty-five quarters. Okay. Now you can also do long division off to the side. How many times does twenty-five go into and do all your long division? It takes a while. Or you could just see that right there. A little shortcut. Cancel the 25s, and I have 45 pi over 48, and inches divided by seconds is the same thing as inches per second. And is there anything else we can take out? Three. You know what? Three goes into both of Three times what? 15. And three times? 16. Got it. 15 pi over 16. Inches per second. All right. No calculator necessary. Just know it algebra one, basically. Put a lot of it. Okay? And there you go. So there's your longest problem right there. Everything else to be sure. Alright? Okay. Let's check out another page. As we continue to walk through music history, figure out how fast these things can spin around. Alright? On the next page, we have our good old buddy Billy Joel. And his album named 52nd Street. This was the first album ever released on Blink. This one revolutionized the entire industry. CD. The first CD ever, which is strangely before the first cassette, but they weren't really mass produced. This is more like an experimental. This was actually work. And then it took a long time, and then finally in the 90s, then they started coming out with CDs and cassettes became obsolete. Okay. It took a long time. Okay, so first CD. Maybe you'll remember that in the future if it's on a game show. Mm -hmm. First CD ever. <laughs> yes, you and the red. Uh, bon Jovi. Okay, so remember this. I mean, uh, sorry, Billy Joel. Oh, I gave away another question. Oops, that's later. Okay, uh, now, the other one, now this is revolutionary right here, okay? First of all, with the CD, which you kids take for granted these days, you can actually go directly to track four instantly, right? And you're there, no fast forwarding, no rewinding, all right? That's be nice. Uh, but the next one's even better. This is the song called Tom's Diner by Suzanne Vega. And it is revolutionary because in 1995, on July 14th, 
Now, the song actually came out in 1990. That's why that's at the bottom there. Okay? But in 1995, they took that song, it was the first song they ever made into a, guess what? Into an MP3. Oh, yeah. And that changed everything right there because that opened up the doors for iTunes and everything else. And now that's pretty much the only way to get music. Record store, what are record stores? Okay? Yes, the song Tom's Diner is about the Tom's Diner in New York, which you may recognize as the restaurant from Seinfeld, if you know Seinfeld. Okay? So she wrote a song about the real life restaurant, and that became the first MP3. How about that? Interesting. All right. Now, of course, MP3s aren't actually spinning. Everything in your computer is, but the MP3 itself is not spinning. Okay. So much for spinning. But we can do the CD problem. So in C, we have an audio compact disc that measures 120 millimeters. What's a compact disc? CD. Oh, that's what CD stands for. How about that? If you didn't know. It's an acronym for compact disc. All right. Now every CD measures exactly 120 millimeters for the entire diameter. All right, so we got this. Okay. Now, uh, they make 200 RPM. What's RPM? Revolutions per minute. That is revolutions per minute. 